Hey, what's up? Hello. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to our channel. Today's video is a little bit of a surprise uh, because Bex right now is over in Europe with her family on holiday. And so I thought while she was traveling, I would make a video that was all about books that are about traveling. So I've put together a collection of five books um, that are all somehow to do with travel that I'm going to upload while she is away traveling. The idea sounded a lot more charming and cute in my head, but now it's out into the world and here we go. For someone of my age, I've traveled to a lot of places and I've been really fortunate to do so. I've lived in a lot of places, I've lived in a variety of cities, and so I have tried to pick out books that have different aspects of travel in them that I remember from the times that I have left home. And the first book is The Hotel Nantucket by Erin Hildebrand. This book was one of the first that I read on my Kindle and this is a story of a woman who is on the island of Nantucket, which is off the coast of Massachusetts here in the United States, and she is recovering from a tremendous breakup of many, many years, and there is a new sort of foreign proprietor who has bought an old building, has refurbished it into like the most beautiful hotel with every possible luxury. It's like the luxuriest of luxury hotels possible, uh, and it's called the Hotel Nantucket, and he hires her to be the manager. And this hotel is formerly one that burnt to the ground in 1922 and folks say that the building is still haunted by one of the women who was a maid there and she was trapped in the top floor and her ghost still haunts the building. So there are a variety of perspectives in this book, most of them are from the hotel staff and it switches perspectives multiple times throughout the novel. And the main plot and the main crux of this book is each of the main characters who are running uh, the front desk staff, the people who are at the reception, Lisbeth, who is the general manager, a couple of folks who are working uh, in housekeeping, and someone else that I know that I'm forgetting. All of them kind of their own story going on, but then there is also this woman who comes to stay and stays for the entire summer. And she brings her children and she's clearly like running and escaping something. Uh, but the main conceit of this book is that there is a hotel reviewer out there and she never ever gives anything five stars. And the manager is now being told from her boss who is all the way in the UK. He's never visited Nantucket in his life. Like he's just the owner of the property and he expects big things out of this hotel. His requirement is that by the end of the summer they achieve like the five stars or whatever from this mysterious online reviewer and nobody knows who that person is. Apparently nobody knows when they visit the hotel so not knowing this person's identity the staff is just working all summer waiting for this person to show up. It is emotional. There is a lot. There's just so much happening for one tiny island 30 miles out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, Nantucket is a place that I have visited and I really enjoyed this book a because it was full of a variety of storylines. I appreciated the shifting in perspectives. I appreciated how the storylines all eventually kind of wove together and it had a really satisfying ending for the plot that had been built up within it. Ellen Hildebrand is a local author to Nantucket, so she was able to correctly identify and describe uh, places that I've been in ways that I know to be true, even having only visited there and never really spent a lot of time on the island. Uh, I guess you could, could consider this kind of a beach read, but I think it also has more depth than just your standard beach read, uh, if you're gonna go by the popular societal definition of what that is, although Reminder, any book that you read at the beach is kind of a beach read, so take that for what you will. I would recommend this book if you like drama, if you like family drama, even though there's not a ton of family drama in there, there is a little bit, and the cast of characters who are the hotel staff kind of become, in a weird way, uh, their own family by the end of the book. So this is definitely one to check out if you like something that's uh, emotional and gripping and you don't quite know how it's going to turn out. I gave this book three stars. So of course staying in hotels is only one aspect of travel. The next aspect of travel that I have is this book which is aptly titled well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is actually fourth in a series uh, called Well Met, which is a series of contemporary romances that are all set under uh, the setting of a Renaissance fair, and these are just so, so delightful. If you like a contemporary romance, there's nothing that you won't like about these characters. If you think that Renaissance fairs are ridiculous and nerdy, I promise you by the end of this you will have a new appreciation for them and the work 
and the theater and the, just the effort and toil that goes into putting up a production of that size and touring it around the country or around the world in some cases. And of course, if you do like Renaissance fairs, if you love Renaissance fairs, these are certainly books for you. This particular novel uh, follows a high-powered lawyer named Lulu who, when her entire life blows up and she just quits her job, puts all of her bills on auto pay and decides to join uh, the Renaissance Fair and travel across the northeast regions of the United States uh, in a camper with a band called the Dueling Kilts. Uh, she just like launches right into that and does it. And this is Lulu's story. You will learn who Lulu is, I think, by reading the previous three books in this series. Uh, but each of these books really just has like a female character who has an emotional backstory that she has to work through and manages to do so at the Renaissance Fair. And always, there's always some aspect of the Renaissance Fair uh, that brings out something new in them and allows them to see themselves uh, in a way that they didn't at the beginning of the book. So these are lovely and cute and very, very nicely written. Uh, well Met is still my favorite, probably because of the bookstore and the amount of literature and Shakespeare that is involved in the book, uh, but all four of them are lovely and I would highly, highly recommend them to anyone who is of the contemporary romance persuasion. I give this book four stars. Keeping with the theme of ground transportation, this next book is The Wongs vs. The World by Jade Chang. This book is one that we read for book club, my book club at the library, and this centers on a family who loses everything in the financial crisis of 2008. Uh, and they are incredibly wealthy. They live in Bel Air, California, and suddenly all of their money in bad investments is gone. They have nothing. And one of the children in the family lives in her own house being a painter or an artist or something out in upstate New York. And the rest of the family gets into the, the car, which they still kind of have possession of. Um, they pick up their two other middle and youngest children. And with their stepmother, they drive attempt to anyway, all the way across the country to try to get to the oldest daughter who is out on the other side of the US and make sense of what their life is going to be now that they have nothing. They are running from a devastation and humiliation just from the society that they have kept over time. They are running from uh, pretty much the <laughs> evasion of all of their debts uh, because they're unable to pay back what they owe on all of their failed business ventures. And it's a real adjustment, obviously, for everybody in that family to go from one lifestyle to another. If you're familiar with the popular television program Schitt's Creek, uh, then you will, <laughs> you will fully understand the opening plot of this book. This is certainly a family drama. You get perspectives from all of the different characters who are taking this trip, as well as the oldest daughter. And eventually, it all kind of comes to a head at the very end of the book, and their underlying goal not only is to get to the East Coast, but also for the father character in this book. His goal is to get back to China and claim his ancestral homelands because he figures, okay, well, if I don't have any money and I don't have a place in America, I need to get back to China, reclaim what I know is mine, I'll move my whole family to China and everything will be fine. And he's trying to use his eldest daughter's house in upstate New York as a jumping off point for that. This book is richly detailed. It is very somber. There's not a ton of levity in this and it really explores the different facets of each of these characters. I think a lot of the characters are really, really developed. It's been a long time since I've read this book, but I recall each of the characters being quite well developed. You dig back into their history and how everything in their lives before uh, where they are at that exact moment in time has created the feeling that they are having as the book goes on. And you just get a lot of very different personality types. I both listened to and read this book and I would highly recommend a hybrid uh, physical book and audio situation for it as well. Four stars. This next book takes us off the ground and into the skies. This is Come Fly the World by Julia Cook. And actually, this one's for you, Bex. This is a nonfiction book. This is the story of the original stewardesses of the Pan Am Airlines and their role not only through history in developing what a stewardess is and what now a flight attendant has become and is and what the responsibilities of that role on an aircraft are, 
but also uh, the distinct role that Pan Am and the women who were on those planes making the flights happen had in the Vietnam War. This is another book that I read with my library book club, and the book is billed to kind of focus on three separate areas, the glamour, the danger, and also the liberatory nature of being an airline flight attendant, or in this case, a Pan Am stewardess. Um, the, the glamour that came from having this job that was all the way up in the air that had extraordinarily stringent uh, requirements for what women had to look like and act like and sound like and be in order to um, make it into that profession. The danger of just, you know, the nature of air travel, right? And the early days of airplanes and what you were and weren't allowed to do on them, where they flew, uh, and what those particular flights were trying to achieve in different types of airspace. Uh, and then also liberation, that liberatory nature of having a job that didn't tie you to one place, that didn't tie you to a person, that let you go all over the world and do different things and meet different people uh, in a way that had not existed before the development of commercial air travel. The author actually weaves in different real life accounts of women who were Pan Am stewardesses back in the day, along with a broader overarching picture of Pan Am itself. I think one of my criticisms of this book is that it spent a lot of time describing uh, the policies of Pan Am and the nature of the company, etc, etc, and not really enough time focusing on the real kind of devastating and traumatic impacts, like the impact of what all of those different um, circumstances and, and trials that the people who worked for them had to go through, what the impact was on those women, uh, where it could have done a little bit of a finer job at that for really trying to take the feminist tone that this book tried to take. Um, but overall, I thought this was an enjoyable read. It was an interesting look and something that ordinarily just wouldn't be top of my radar. And uh, I think I gave this book also four stars. And to ground us in book five is one of my very, very favorite books, Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. This is a book that Bex gave me for my birthday, I believe, back in 2018. This, I think, was perhaps my only five-star read that year. Uh, all of this to say that this is a story of a woman called Lillian Boxfish, who on New Year's Eve 1984, she takes a very, very long walk through Manhattan. And you get all of her introspection as she kind of makes her way up and down the island and around and visits places that she knows from the past, that she has deep connection to from the past, uh, visits places she's never been before, walks by some stuff that she never thought that she would encounter, has some arguments with <laughs> some people uh, who are wondering what this very elderly woman is doing walking around New York City at night by herself, especially on a night where uh, people are drinking heavily and probably getting a little riotous. And like many books, uh, this narrative is both in the past and in the present, as it were. So she's reflecting on the things that are in her past and talks about her history being an advertising writer uh, back in the 1930s and what that was like for a woman in marketing and in the marketing world and how her writing and her husband and her child just gave her all of these different ways into life and then she's reflecting on that in the now of 1984 and seeing how the days today are different than they were back then and how the roads that she took in the past might have led her to where she is and the person she is today. It's a very introspective, very ref reflective book uh, written by a poet. Kathleen Rooney is a poet and that definitely comes across in this writing. The writing feels... I, the word lyrical gets used a little too often, I feel, uh, but this writing feels very poetic, very cadence-driven, not flowery, but definitely dynamic and evocative, and it's just such a wonderful story. So if introspection and deep thinking and ruminating, but in a little bit of a positive way on the past is your thing, and you like an older character, who is ready to just drop her belongings at the first sign of trouble and be like, go ahead, take my coat. It's all good. I don't want any trouble. Then there you go. This is the book for you. Five stars. So those are five books about 
travel. I'll sneak in a sixth book actually uh, that I'm in the middle of right now and have not finished. So can't give you a full honest review, but that book is called The Last Resort, A Chronicle of Paradise, Profit, and Peril at the Beach by Sarah Stadola or perhaps Stodola. I'm listening to this book right now on Libro FM and it is just so fun to see someone take something that we as a society I think have been taught to revere and look forward to and look toward as a shining paragon of what we deserve so much, aka the beach and a beach resort, and really pick apart what it is and why we love it and what has led us to feeling that that is the end all be all of holiday relaxation. And now there's of course, you know, personal preference. There are some people that don't like the beach, but the zeitgeist and society as a whole have definitely led us to feeling like the beach is the pinnacle of paradise. And I'm really excited uh, to see this author tear that apart and give us a different type of perspective. I'm listening to this book and I'm really enjoying the narration. It does not feel overly analytical, it doesn't feel dry, and it certainly feels like a nice piece of travel writing um, that I would probably already recommend. There you have it, five books plus a bonus about travel. I hope you all are having lovely weeks and lovely lives. If there are any books that you love that are about travel, fiction or nonfiction, please go ahead and pop them in the comments. Anything that you would like to know about us is of course in the description, and we will see you very soon.